through time, you will know what it's like to lose. To feel so desperately that you're right, yet to fail all the same. Dread it. Run from it. Destiny still arrives. to the most high all praises to the most high all right first and foremost all right as always we want to give all praises glory and honor to the most high right whose name is yahweh and we do so in the name of his only begotten son hamashiach yahweh shai what's going on brother how you doing how you doing brother all right so again we want to give all praises to the most high god of abraham isaac and jacob and none else right the so-called black hispanic and native american man woman and child all right and if you are in the vicinity of this uh, uh, this voice, right, that we are out here teaching. Please listen, please understand. Please, please, please come back to your culture, black man. Please come back to your culture, black woman, so-called, because no one's black, let's just be honest. No one's the color of my man's shirt over there, right? No one's the color of a tire. No one's the color of his white shirt. No one's white, no one's black. We all go back to a nation of people, right? And that nation of people has a heritage, all right? That nation of people has a, has a culture that we lost identity of. We've lost our identity as so-called, again, as so-called black people, right? So our job as Israelites is to come out on the highways and byways as Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, who, who, who told and ordained us to come out here and build to the marriage, right? So we're out here doing that, we're doing what our father and our, and our king Yahweh Shah told us to do, right? So give me the book of uh, Ezekiel 3. How you doing, sis? You believe in this book, sis? Did you know that you are in this book as God's chosen people? Right? Not just by spirit, but by flesh. Can I give you a scripture real quick? Just one scripture. Give me Romans 9. One, 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 one. Romans 9, and, uh, start at verse 3. And take a flyer from us. So we are out here teaching, sis, that our people, the so-called so -called black, Hispanic, Native American, are the true Jews of this Bible. The Israelites that God chosen, right? Anybody ever tell you this information that we're the, that we're the people of this book? Okay, all praises. So read this for her real quick. Give me verse uh, number number three. Come on. This is the book of Romans, chapter nine, verse three. For I could wish that myself were a curse for, from Christ uh -huh. for my brethren. For my, what? my brethren. For my brethren. So your brethren are these men up here. Us up here. Will you be your brothers? Right. So my brethren. This is Paul writing to a group of people. Watch this. My kinsmen. My kin what's, a kin what's kinfolk mean? Like cousins, right? Bloodline, right? So Paul is saying that I wish that I was a curse from Christ, meaning I went through the same thing that Jesus Christ went through for my own brothers, for my own kinsmen, my own family, right? Read. According to the flesh. According to what? According to the flesh. So according to the flesh. You got cousins, you got brothers, sisters, right? According to the flesh. We would be the same people, right? We are the same people, but not everybody, not all folk ain't, ain't kinfolk, folk, right? You see that? Read. Verse four. Uh -huh. Who are Israelites? Who are, who? who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption? So the adoption of coming back to the most high God is for the Israelites. Paul just said that, read. And the glory. And the glory goes to the Israelites, read. And the covenants. And the covenants. Covenant and the new covenant goes right back to the Israelites, read. And the giving of the law. And the giving of the law, right, goes right back to who? The Israelites. Come on. And the service of God. And what? And the service of God. So also the service of God goes back to the Israelites. So if you look on this the sign right here, right? As a what's your nationality, if you don't mind me asking? African American, right? But nowhere in the Bible where you're gonna see two continents identify a nation of people right it's a bloodline of a man named israel right where you would get the israelite from so the covenants the promise the glory all goes back to who the israelites and lucky for you 
lucky for you, you would be an Israelite, sis. That's right. right? Going back to the patriarchs of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, your forefathers, our forefathers up here. It's not a color thing, sis. It's a bloodline thing. Right. You see what I'm saying? So moving forward, you can no longer call yourself African and American. These, 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 are, these are two names, right, that people just put on you. What, what, what tribe of Africa do we go back to? We don't know, right? We are actually teaching our culture right here. If you give us five minutes, we'll teach you more in five minutes than the Christian church has taught you in all your years of life. Right. Right? Watch this. Read that. Ezekiel 3. The book of Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 4. Uh -huh. And he said unto me, son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel. The house of Israel, that's you, right? Come on. And speak with my words unto them. Come on. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech. So we, what, what God told Ezekiel, the prophet, is to go to the Israelites. And when he says, do not go to a people of a, a strange speech, he's talking about the other nations. You got other nations that live on this earth. You got Moabites, who are the so-called Chinese today. You got Ammonites, right? Going back, they're the so-called Japanese. You got Edomites, who are the so-called Caucasians, right? You have Hamites, who will be, we're not, we're not African, but the modern day African majority are Hamites, Cushites. They're the same people that had Moses and his children in slavery in Egypt. So we're, just because we're all dark, doesn't mean we're all the same. Because an East Indian is darker than me. Can be darker than you. Does that make him you? No. An East Indian with the red dot, that's not us, right? You see that? So, he, so the Most High said, go to the people of Israel and not the people of a strange speech, right? Read. And of an hard language. And a hard language, a language that we can't understand, right? Can you speak Russian? It's a hard language, right? Can you speak Chinese? No, right? But we can, speak, we can teach you how to speak Hebrew. We can show you the Hebrew. We can show you the Greek, right? Read. But to the house of Israel. Is that name again? The house of Israel, meaning family. So you're seeing a family up here, right? And we got families. We got big families all over the United States, all over the world that teach this truth. And it is Bible in truth and in sincerity, sis. Right? Read on. Not to many people of a strange speech. Yeah, so God never wanted the Israelite, uh, God never wanted his prophecies to go to everybody, to go to all nations. God wanted his prophecy and his promises and the glory and the covenants to go to who? They had, give her a hand. Give the sister a hand. All praises. All right. Push that. Bring it out. You have pride. I can't have pride being called African and American and not knowing the language of any of those continents, not knowing what tribe of Africa I'm from. Africa is a big continent, right? You got an east side, west side, south, central, you got north, and they have different dialects, different heritage, different customs, different laws. We always want to be African, but I don't see our people putting the plate in their lip. I don't see our people, right, wanting to embrace that culture. Because it's not our culture. Our culture goes back to this Bible. Our women, it said, the scripture says that our women, their feet wouldn't even touch the ground. Right? Deuteronomy 28, 54 will tell you that. Right? 56, Salakia. Right? Our, our women's feet were so precious that their feet wouldn't even touch the ground. How are our women now today, sis? They're, are, 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 they, are they the women of this book? Are they like Sarah and, and Rebecca? No. They're different now, right? You see our women, they twerking on the streets. You got our young girls selling their bodies. Our young men have become uh, poisons to our own women, pimping our women out. We're trying to correct that out here. Right. But we first must come back and become a culture again. The scripture says, gather yourselves together, O nation, not desire. It doesn't say everybody. It said, O nation, the Arab, they got their nation, they got their customs, and they laughing at the so-called black man. They laugh at the so-called black woman because we don't know who we are. Right? Preset? Bring it out. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 45 and verse 25. Uh -huh. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel. So seed is, a, is, is people, right? Like when you have a child, I got three children. I say that's my seed, right? So read it again. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel, so all the children of Israel, come on, be justified uh -huh. and shall glory. See that? So we're going to glory in the Father. Because Christ, he came and died for the Israelites, right? He didn't die for the whole world. Contrary to what your pastor told you, 
Your pastor said God died for all nations. Christ didn't say that. Christ said, I'm only sent for the lost sheep of the house of guests. The house of who? You can fill in the blank. There you go, right? So Christ said that, right? I've only sent for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. God is only choosing and only dealing with a nation of Israel, right? There's no spiritual Israel. Israelites can be spiritual by coming back to the laws and to the customs that God gave our women, that God gave our children, right? That's your son, right? So your son, he can learn this, uh, this custom and grow up wearing the fringes, right? He can grow up keeping the Passover. He can grow up taking pork out of his diet. You guys don't eat pork, do you? Yes. Right, so you see that? So you see that? So we gotta start taking that out. And we can teach you how to start eradicating pork, shrimp, crab and lobster. Because contrary to what your pastor told you, right? Pork is still unclean. No, give me Isaiah 11. I mean, give me Isaiah 66, uh, verse 15. I'm gonna show you a, a future prophecy, right? Because there's, a, there's a, a misconception that the Old Testament is done away with, right? I'm going to show you a prophecy that's going to happen when Christ comes back. And you let me know what you think about this. Read what you got. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter six, 66. Isaiah 66, chapter, uh, verse, chapter 66, verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. So has God sent Christ back with fire yet? No, right? Christ didn't come back with fire yet, right? So this is a future prophecy, all right? So he said the Lord will come back with fire. Come on. And with his chariots like a whirlwind. To render his anger with fury. His anger with fury. Christ coming back angry. Right? Why? Listen to this. And his rebuke with flames of fire. And his rebuke. Rebuke is, a, is, is like a correction, right? I rebuke my children, right? Read. Verse 16. Uh -huh. For by fire. For by fire. That's the purifying agent, right? It's means the cleanse thing, right? By fire. Come on. And by his sword. And by his what? And by his sword. So what is a sword used for? Is it for good? Or is it for something? Like, it, what's the sword for? Yeah. Weapons. And what do what we use weapons for? To make peace or to make war? To make war, right? So Christ is coming back angry with a sword. What's he going to do with that sword? Is he going to sing kumbaya to everybody and crack the sky on a rainbow with little kids and, and, and lamb? No, he's coming back with his fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render anger, right? With a sword. Read. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. All flesh is about to be in that judgment seat, right? Read. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Verse 17. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh. What's, what's swine, sis? Swine? No, no, swine. It's pig, right? So swine is pork, right? So read it again for the system. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh. So you're eating swine's flesh when Christ comes back. Read. And the abomination. Anything abominable. Come on. And the mouse, and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. Say if the Lord. So that word Lord goes back to the name of God who was Yahweh. So Yahweh has made a promise. He said, if, if I send my son back and you're out here eating pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster, all the abominations, right? Anything abominable, right? And being disobedient to his word, you're going to be slain like everybody else, right? How does that make you feel? Not good, but you can repent. You can repent, and then give me a, a thought of my ways, Psalm 119, right? Because you can re you can think on your ways, and in turn, and come right back to this law, come right back to being obedient, right? Give me First uh, Samuel 15:22. We teaching obedience to God up here. 
That's the most important thing in life. The scripture says the whole duty of man is to keep the commandments and fear God, right? It ain't about how much money you make. It ain't about how famous you can get. It ain't about how many uh, uh, um, Oscar awards you can get or Grammy awards or how, how many followers on YouTube. That's what the world makes the whole duty of you are, right? You're not important if you don't have a million followers. But God said something different, right? He said be obedient, right, and live. You see what I'm saying? So read that real quick. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter uh, 15, verse 22. Uh -huh. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? See that? So, so, so Samuel said, Does God want you to sacrifice or obey him? Because the Israelites, your people, right? Your forefathers, your foremothers, when we messed up, we had to do a sacrifice to make things right with God. But God said, is it more about sacrifices or about obedience? Right? Read. Behold, to obey. To do what? To obey. So to obey, come on. Is better than sacrifice. So to obey is better than sacrifice. Right? We got kids. Right? You're more pleased with your child when he's obedient versus disobedient. Right? So what standard are we measuring our obedience off of? Right? What measurement? Are we measuring our standard, our, our obedience off of? It goes back to the laws of Moses, right? Because the laws of Moses are very alive and well to this day, right? It doesn't die. The laws of Moses keeps you alive, right? The laws of Moses tells me do not eat pork. Now when I don't eat pork, I don't have trichnosis worms in my body, right? I don't have diabetes in the gout all in my knees and in my feet, right? I'm able to get up, right? Once I said, keep these commandments and live. Right? So that for us to live, we got to be obedient to God. It's That's not because right. God don't want, he don't like pigs. It ain't about that. It's because the pig does not digest their food properly. So there's toxins in there. It's why we have cancer in our people. So we have hypertension and hyper blood, high blood pressure. Bring it out. Right? All these things. So God said you can't smoke, right? You can't, you can't drink in excess, right? Would the black woman be better or worse if she had one partner? Wake him up. Think about it, right? We'll be better if a woman had one partner, right? We'll be that now. STDs aren't passed around. What, what, what if what if black men stop being adulterers? Will we become better as a nation of people? If the Hispanic man said, "I'm no longer going to be an adulterer," and if our women stop uh, um, uh, twerking, right, and they decided to keep the Sabbath days when it was possible, right? What about uh, what about uh, pagan holidays, right? Aren't we better when we save our money on Christmas? and not do Christmas because that's not our culture. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Our culture is to go back, all right brother, right? Our culture is to go back and keep the Passover, keep the Feast of Dedication, which you would call Hanukkah. That's our culture, right? What they gave us here in America is a watered down version of us trying to be like them. You see what I'm saying? Black folks is trying to keep up with the Joneses. So we take on the customs of the so-called white people. Well, they've been trying to be like you. They took your heritage and said, they're the Jews. They're not the real Jews. You are, right? They're not the real Jews. They said that you were black woman, but black is a negative connotation, right? right? Just like white is a positive connotation, but are they, are they positive? When you see uh, 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 Emmett Till, you see that picture of Emmett Till? You gotta go, go, go look the picture of Emmett Till up and how his face was just mauled. He was a nine, he was about your son's age. His mother sent him from Chicago all the way down to the south. And they beat the boy to a pope and murdered him, right? And they got off free, right? This is the people that we're trying to be like, the so-called white people that don't want us to be, but they want to be like you. You see what I'm saying? All right. Preset, bring it up. Uh, I'm going to read Psalms 119 first. Psalms 119 verse 1. Blessed are the undefiled in the way. And when you go into this word blessed, it's the word asher which is happy, right? So it says, it says happy are the ones, right? Read it again. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. In the law of the Lord. So to walk in the law of the Lord, now you're happy, right? Right? Because now, now you, now this is what repentance looks like. This is true repentance. It ain't just saying, oh, I forgive, oh, God forgive me. And you go on right back on the block and you selling them G-Packs, right? 
It ain't about that, right? It ain't like, oh, God forgive me, and then you right back to eating that pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster. It said, blessed, happy, right, are the ones that keep the laws of God, the laws of Moses, right? Read. Verse 2, uh -huh. blessed are they that keep his testimonies uh -huh. and that seek him with the whole heart. You got to seek him with your whole heart. A lot of, I'm going to tell you something about black people, right? And I was one of them, right? You just show up to church on Sunday, Mother's Day, Easter. What's the, the, the three days? Easter, Mother's Day, Christmas, right? All that, right? And then we, we just say, we did our job. We go to church every other Sunday when we feel like it, right? But he said, seek him after your own heart. Fully, we all got jobs, right? Your job interview, did you kind of halfway do the interview or were you putting on your best? You put your best on. Can you work weekends? Yeah. You didn't want to work weekends, but you said yeah, right? You had, you had everything ready to go because you wanted that job. We got to search for the most highest God, his laws, and the kingdom the same, 10 times more than we want that job because that's way better. The kingdom of God is way better than some nine to five, right? All praises, sis. This is coming. It's making sense. All praises. Precept. Bring it out. The book of Proverbs, chapter twenty-nine, verse two. Uh -huh. When the righteous are in authority, it says, "When the righteous are in authority." Let me ask you something, uh, 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 sis. Uh, in America, are we read, are we led by righteous leadership? No, right? Read it again. When the righteous are in authority, uh -huh. the people rejoice. So when guys like King David was in authority. The people were happy to a certain extent when King Solomon was in authority the people were happy the economy was good in Israel right but the, the feast days there was no war during time of Solomon right when King Saul for a little bit was in authority the people rejoiced Hezekiah right all these great kings that you descend from right read on but when the wicked but when the what but when the wicked so now you got the wicked that's in authority that's in power donald trump joe biden obama all of them right when the wicked are in authority come on the people mourn the people mourn right we're in mourning we're talking about it see when the bible is saying the people the people it's not talking about everybody it's talking about your people our people we're in mourning when these other people are set up over us right deuteronomy 7 and 6 right right Precept? Come. So so real quick, sis, right? Because I know it's a lot. And I don't want to feed you from a water hose all this information, right? So what's what's your biblical uh understanding? Like what what what's your biblical background? Are you like Christian? Okay, so what denomination of Christianity? more like I would say Christian, but more spiritual. More spiritual, right? Alright, so real quick, uh um when you understand, right, the the, the dogma of Christianity. It go, I'm just going to give you a quick synopsis, right? It goes back to a man named Constantine, 324 through 25 AD, right? He had this council called the Council of Nicaea, right? At that council, they went through a whole lot of the doctrine they were going to push moving forward. This is 300 years after Christ. First century Christians were not third century Christians, right? Third century Christians are what you see going around here today, the churches we all came from. These go back to third, fourth, fifth, sixth century Christians, right? Guys like Polycarp, right? So, so what we teach is the truth of this Bible. Right. We don't let a man that's getting money, right? He's getting a, 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 a non-tax uh, uh, money, right? The 5013 charter, they call it. He's getting paid off your tithes, and he's giving you one scripture, and then giving you a feel-good message on, on Sunday afternoon. That's right. Then you go to work Monday through Friday. You party on Saturday, drink your life away, right? Smoke your life up, and you go right back in. It's a cycle that they have you up under. The Bible tells us different. The Bible says that the Israelites are God's chosen, right? Hold that. Get that seven and six. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter seven and verse six. For thou art an holy people uh -huh. unto the Lord thy God. So, so. You got a son. He's holy to you. Like, you, there's other kids all on this block. But if he cries mommy, you can hear him, right? Because he's holy means he's separate from every other child. Bring it out. Like, like if I, I'm honest, right? If my kid, if there was a um, some kind of uh, uh, gunfire, I'm a, I know there's other kids around, but I'm getting mine. That's right. right? Bring it out. So the Most High said, "Thou." That means the, the Hebrew word for that terminology we just use that phrase is called kodash. Kodash means holy, separate, right? 
So it says, for thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God, because God only deals with his children. Right? Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. Did what? Chosen thee. So the Most High chosen the Israelites. Right? No other nation. The Israelite. Come on. To be a special people. What kind of a people? A special people. We are a special people. I got a special child. I got three of them, right? They're special. I love kids, but I love mine, right? Come on. A special people unto himself. Unto who? Unto himself. Most I say, you're special to me. Like, come on. Above. Where? Above. Where are we? Above. We are above. Come on. All people. All who? All people. All. The Israelite woman is above every single woman on this earth. Oh. The Israelite man is above every single man on this earth. What type of people? Listen to this. What type of people can go through four or five, six hundred years of oppression and still live like how we live? That's right. Right? When when other nations, when they money crashes on the Wall Street, they jump in front of a train. They kill themselves. If I lose my job, I lose my money, I just get up and I go right back at it, right? Same with us, right? It said we are above, come on, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So it sounds like God is a separatist. God is what, today's terminology, they would call God a racist, right? Because he said that the Israelite nation, the race of Israel, is above all people upon the face of the earth, right? He chose one people. These other people, they didn't get chose. Right. So give me Baruch 4 real quick. Give me Baruch 4 and uh, 1. Right, give me Baruch four and uh, four and four. Right, yeah, we got you, sis. We got you. We got brothers. I know you got to go. Oh, you from where? Greenville. Okay, okay. All praises. So I, I know you got to go soon, but we want to give you the good news. Right, give me Isaiah sixty one and start at verse uh, from the top. I got two more for you. Then I know you got to go. Give me Baruch 4 and 4 and 4, right? Because what we out here teaching, we're uplifting our people. Right. Our people get killed in these streets. Right. And they don't care. Right? Our people are uh our people are dying at a high rate, whether it's heart disease, our young children, right? Our young children are being introduced to homosexuality at a young age. Transgenderism at a young age. The world is waxing worse and worse and right. worse. Because the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Bring it out. You see what I'm saying? But when the exactly right. So listen to this. Because now, earlier, the brother read in Psalm 119. It said, "Blessed are they right that keep the commandments." That word goes into uh, happy, right? You're happy because you have the commandments. The law was is you're eligible to keep the laws of God. That's what we're saying. You're eligible. Right now, you're not in the laws of God, but you are eligible. To, to come into the laws of God. Bring it's it out. Repentance and then being converted, right? So listen to this. This is this should make you feel good. Listen to this. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 4. Uh -huh. Oh, Israel. Oh, who? Oh, Israel. So that's the nation, right? You, you just found out today, what's the date? The, the, the 15th? You found out July 15th that you were an Israelite. You were a daughter of Zion, right? Read. Happy are we. You said what? Happy are we. You said, oh, Israel, happy are we. Why are we happy as Israelites? We're the last hired first fire. We get gunned down, right? We got drugs in our neighborhood, right? We got uh, the ghettos, the slums. How are we happy? Think about this. Why, why should we be happy when we're at the bottom of society? The Bible's going to tell you why you should still be happy. Read from the top. Chapter 4, verse 4. Uh -huh. Oh, Israel, happy are we. For things that are pleasing to God, the things that please God come on. are made known unto us. What? Are made known unto us. So the things that please the Most High God is made known to you on July 15th. You know how to please the Father. You know how to make God smile. And when you do the right thing, your son's going to follow suit, right? He's going to learn how to do the right thing, right? So I got one more. I know you got to go. Give me uh, from the top. The book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 1. Wow. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me. So the Most High anointed Isaiah, the prophet, who's an Israelite, come on. To preach good tidings. To preach the good news, the good tidings, also known as the gospel. Come on. Unto the meek. Unto the meek. Where's the, the meek? Right? The meek is the ones out here that sign and crying in the back of police cars, right? The, the meek is, is Trayvon Martin, right? Uh, Tamir Rice, 
Breonna Taylor, George Floyd. That's the meek, right? The meek is the ones that's getting guns in the streets. We got young children. They're the meek. They put drill music into our children's brain, right? Not only are they putting LGBTQ, but they're putting drill music in there. You know what drill music is? Nothing but killing your brother, right? No other nation has a has a music like that. No, you don't see the Chinese going out around saying, I'm gonna kill another Chinese, man. You don't see the A-rap music like that. But why us? Because we are the meek, right? We're the ones that's actually being uh, uh, confederate. They actually say that there's a, a, a crafty council against us so that we don't no longer know who we are. So now they call you black woman, African-American, right? Watch this, read that on. <laughs> he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Why is I wasn't brokenhearted? I'm from California, I grew up in the 90s, right? All I seen was black women crying because their child was killed. Mm -hmm. Crips versus bloods, right? Come on. To proclaim liberty. To proclaim liberty, don't we need liberty? Read. To the captives. To the captives, come on. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Come on. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Come on. And the day of vengeance. The day of what? And the day of vengeance. You learned today that Christ coming back with vengeance. So we just read it in Isaiah 61, the day of the Lord, we're going to be delivered. Watch this. When Christ comes back for vengeance, that's the salvation of the black man and black woman. Right. right? When Christ comes back with that glistening sword, that fiery sword with flames of rebuke, that's our doubt, that's our deliverance. Because Christ's name is Yahawashah. His name is not Jesus. And Yahawashah's name is He is salvation or He is deliverance. So his name right by by prophecy is the deliverance of our people right that's a beautiful thing come on the day of vengeance of our god uh -huh. to comfort all that mourn to appoint unto them that mourn in zion Where? in zion so zion is the glorified state it's another name israel has different names zion is the glorified name of the israelite right read that again to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, uh -huh. to give unto them beauty for ashes. So now we're going to exchange, we have ashes right now. We're going to exchange our ashes for beauty, right? It's almost like if I took some, some aluminum cans and got money out of it, right? So we're going to exchange beauty for ashes. I'll give you my ashes, give me the beauty, right? This is us being redeemed, come on. The oil of joy for mourning. So we got mourning, now we're going to get the oil of joy. You ever got the shower out before when you ash you? You put that oil on, right? Now you feel better, right? Come on. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So we have a spirit of heaviness right now, right? But now we're going to put on a new garment of praise. Come on. That they that might, who? that they. That they, that's you, that's all of us, come on. Might be called trees of righteousness. And that's why it says the, when the righteous and authority that people go, see Israelites, what you don't know, and we can teach you this, is that our people are going to come into authority when Christ comes back and establishes his kingdom, the so-called black man, woman, and child, Hispanic man, woman, and child, Native American man, woman, and child, we're going to now be in a position of rulership. That's and right. Leadership. You're looking at the future kings right here on this earth, right? We're looking at a daughter of Zion right here that's waking up right before your eyes, right? We're in the valley of dry bones, right? It's a lot of dead, spiritually dead black people out here. You see what I'm saying? And we're actually waking up and coming back and being revitalized, right? I know you got to go, but he's going to read some more. If you got to go, we understand. So check us out. All praises to the most high. So moving forward, what's your nationality? I'm an Israelite, right? And before you leave, let me ask you, who's your father? Your father goes back to the, the, the islands, Haiti, uh, Jamaica, or was he a Negro on a slave ship? Your, your forefathers, your, your, as far as you can go back to and trace your ancestors. Who do you, who do you say you go back to? I'm trying to find out who your tribe is. Because now being an Israelite is one thing, right? But then we got to understand who we go back from, right? So if you were American, are you a Negro? Are you West Indian, Haitian, right? Now you can know who your tribe is. Your father Native American, right? So just look at it, right? Check out that information. You got the card. We got a YouTube channel, right? You got questions, inbox to YouTube. We out here every Friday and every Saturday, all right? All praise assists. And you take care of that young prince and show him what we teach you, right? All right, all praises. Preset, bring it out.
Yeah, so uh, this was tying into what you was talking about with her. This is Psalms 149, verse 4. Uh -huh. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He did what? The Lord taketh pleasure in his people. That's a possessive pronoun. Taking, ple taking pleasure in his people. Not all people. The Lord didn't uh, uh, take pleasure in, in the Caucasian, the Neanderthal. He actually saw his people. Get out, sister. That's you, Get sis. Out. Right? Get you will be. See, look. Yeah, yeah, we're, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're terrible because we teach the truth, right? Right? Because we're terrible, we're terrible because we teach the truth. You wouldn't know the truth if it slapped you in the face, right? right? right. right. But you know your oppressor. You know the other nations, right? You're more, you're, and this is why we say, keep 